Good morning. Uh, my name is Raghu Sundaram. I'm the uh, Dean of the Stern School of Business, and it's my distinct pleasure and privilege to welcome you to this conference. Um, let me begin, first of all, with, a, with an apology for uh, starting late. I've, uh, I was reminded on my way over here of a rather unkind comment that a reporter made about Bill Clinton's jogging every morning when he was president, that he starts out slow and then tapers off. And uh, my days always go like that. I start out late, and then it becomes worse with uh, every possible thing. So my apologies for that. And let me also begin with some thanks to the organizers of this splendid event. One of the advantages I found of being dean is that other people do tremendous work, and then you're called upon to take the credit for it and other things. But here I must mention the tremendous work that has gone into this conference. So to make sure I don't forget any names, uh, thank you, first of all, to annual reviews to the CFA Institute Research Foundation, to MIT's Gallup Center for Finance and Policy, and of course, Stern's very own Solomon Center for putting together this conference. A very special thanks to Jenny Ranking for spearheading efforts from annual reviews, and of course, to Andrew Lowe and Bob Merton, um, the editors of the annual review of financial economics. It's hard to believe in many ways that it is uh, 10 years since the financial crisis occurred because none of us, I think, who lived through that period, who were engaged with markets or engaged uh, working in the markets, doing research on markets, can ever forget that period. And I'm not just talking about what happened in fall 2008 with the collapse of Lehman and, uh, and AIG and the subsequent near takeovers of the financial sector by the government, but all the events running up to it, from the incredible credit um, and commodities boom of the early 2000s to the compression of CDS spreads to incredibly low levels, to uh, early 2007 when mortgage defaults started piling up in large numbers, the failure of Bear Stearns, the blowing out of emerging market credit spreads, August 2007 when hedge funds suffered very large losses, and then of course the, all the events of 2008. It's, uh, that whole period is one when you look back on it, it was almost as if every month, every day was a period of wonder at what is happening in financial markets. And there are, when I think back on that period, there are two or three papers that I remember very clearly that raised this, this wonder. There was a paper, for example, by Ed Altman in 2007 saying, are we in a new credit paradigm? What is going on? A few months later, August 2007 happened, and it was followed by a wonderful paper by Andrew Lowe on, the title was just, what happened in August 2007? And every month, it seemed that our understanding of financial markets was taking a beating, our understanding of their functioning, our understanding of policy, our understanding of risk was taken a beating. None of these clouds is ever without, without a silver lining. What the financial crisis led to was unprecedented critical reflection on what had gone wrong. What was wrong with our understanding? And it led to unprecedented engagement between researchers, people in markets, and policymakers a level of engagement that we would not have seen in the absence of the crisis that occurred and the questioning of our understanding of markets and policies that, that, that followed it. So in many ways, I think the financial crisis, which since then we've been in a period of incredibly low interest rates, which for many of our students has become the new normal. Right? You know, for generations now, I've been, it, it looks like for 10 years I've been teaching students who don't understand a period of high interest rates, who only understand futures curves that are inverted because that's the way the curve markets have been for 10 years. But in many ways, as I said, this has spawned new research and new critical thinking that has been fabulously valuable in many ways. And I'm very proud to say NYU and Stern in particular, led by Matt and others at the Solomon Center, have been leaders in this, in this area. Collectively, Stern has produced, collectively, I literally mean the collective efforts of our faculty led by a small group. We put together five books uh, on, on, over the last decade on the financial crisis and subsequent policies that have come out of it. There's been unprecedented research effort, conferences, engagement with policymakers, with markets, with other researchers. I'm very proud to say um, that we've been amongst the leaders in, in this activity. And this is exactly, of course, what research universities of today, particularly business schools, should actually be doing. The conference we put together today and tomorrow is, a, is I think, a perfect example of the kind of learning that has come out of this. The conference includes research articles on what we've learned since the crisis. It includes keynote addresses, it includes panel discussions by those who were deeply engaged in the markets at that point. And of course, there is the fabulous special event tomorrow with uh, 
with Ben Bananke and uh, and Mervyn King and Jean-Claude Trichet, moderated by Stan Fisher. I think this is the first time these four people have come together on the stage, at least in a public event, to discuss the crisis and what we've learned. So we're very proud to be hosting this event. I wanted to welcome you all again to the conference. And with that, let me turn it over to Andrew Lowe.